Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see your faces. Just so many Zoom classes with cameras off. Uh, I, I finally get to see everybody and the families. It's so awesome to have everybody here uh, having this uh, special service just for confirmands on this, the Confirmation Sunday. Uh, just a couple quick announcements as we, before we begin. Uh, for the Count Me In campaign, we ended with 48 out of 50. So uh, all of those who are good at math, that's still an A+. Plus. So excellent job. We thank everybody who uh, uh, committed to uh, pledging for this year as we move forward. Uh, and as most, if not all of you saw as well, or at least have heard, we now have an associate pastor. Uh, come pastor Zachary uh, Seralt and his wife Kelsey will be joining us later this summer. Give them time to graduate the seminary. Uh, and before they join us. So we are ex super excited about that uh, as we move forward with that as well. Let us begin then. Please rise as we begin with the invocation. Jenny? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and take your seats. Jenny, come on up. Good morning and congratulations. I thought I got out of speaking for a minute. <laughs> um, I guess not. Um, my name is Jenny Piontek and I am the high school youth director here at RLC. And I'm excited because you'll get to come be a part of us now. Um, our youth group is called Breakaway. I hope you all have been getting letters from um, myself. Um, at May 23rd, we are welcoming you all up into breakaway you will have the rest of the summer to participate either with ignite the middle school or you may choose to come on up and start celebrating with the um, high schoolers because y'all will be high schoolers so congratulations i hope to see you soon don't be afraid if you have questions come find me um, i'm excited to have you all here congratulations In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. And the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. We continue with our opening hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
with the confession of sins and absolution. Page 4. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You pray. O oh, most merciful God, we confess to you that even though we are in Christ, we often live as if we were not. Sin dwells in us like light. We fail to bear fruit, and we deserve none of your blessings. Father, remove our sin as a vine dresser prunes the vine, that we may bear fruit in keeping with repentance for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We remain standing for the hymn of praise. God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may remain where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, 
reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? He said, how can I, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. And our epistle is from 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him, and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment, because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise if you're able for the Alleluia verse and reading of the Holy Gospel. according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. 
Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Good morning again, everybody, and welcome. Today is, of course, Confirmation Day. It's also the fifth Sunday of the season of Easter, and we have been more working our way through John's first letter. This is the fourth of five sermons that we're going to be looking at, the content of John's letter. And all the different parts of the letter, you know, kind of reverberate with the same theme. It's all about God's unconditional love for us in Christ Jesus. And because of that gift of love, our love for one another. Going around and around on that theme is kind of like holding up a really precious jewel and you sort of turn it in your hand and you look at how the light reflects off of it, you're seeing all different facets. And we looked at how God gives us the forgiveness of sins, the gift of holy baptism. Last week was the focus on Jesus, our good shepherd. Today, we give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit who enables us to gather in this place to discern what is true from what is false, 
to say yes to it, and, of course, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to love sacrificially, because that's the kind of love we receive from God, first and foremost. As we think about what's true about God and what's false, we can't help but dwell on God's perfect and completed love that's been gifted to us, and as we do, to seek the strength of the Spirit to love one another. Our topics each week are all different, but they're facets of the same basic truth. God is love. He has loved us. And because he loved us, we love one another. Now, all of you who are confirmands gathered here today have spent the last couple of years by the power of the Holy Spirit, discerning what is true from what is false about God in Christ Jesus. You've read what the Bible says about God. You have held that up and have sort of aligned it with what you understand and believe to be true about God as the Holy Spirit is revealing that in your heart. And now this day is a moment where we can stand together and say yes to the things that others said on our behalf on the day that you were baptized. If it was all up to you, needless to say, you wouldn't be here. Neither would I. If it was all dependent on some uh, kind of performance that you have to manufacture this morning, or if it was all based on some fervency in your heart, whether you can say yes to those things or not, it would be a really, really hard thing. It would probably be a kind of scary and anxious day. I would imagine. But the good news is, is that you are not alone in this. First of all, you've got all of us here confessing that faith together with you. But more importantly, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit in your heart who takes that tiny little small faith and makes it a perfect and beautiful thing in God's sight. And for that reason, we are able to gather together not just to talk about what is true and discern true from falsehood, but also what it means to love one another, as God would have us do. Now, love is a popular topic. Everybody's a fan of love, right? In fact, you might remember a hashtag that was popular several years back, love wins, was everywhere a few years ago. It would be tempting to think that this kind of human love is what life is all about. That's what the world would have us think, in fact. But even though that love wins motto has a kind of half-truth to it, it cannot bear the weight of holiness. It would be tempting to think that there's something about love that's deep inside each and every one of us that is kind of a natural thing, and that God's love is somehow a pattern based on that. What the text we just read tells us is it's just the other way around. St. John tells us God is love. And God's brand of love is to impact ours. So if you want to understand what human love should look like and what it's all about, go to what the scriptures tell us about God's love revealed in Jesus Christ and the picture of love that we have in Jesus Christ as he gave up his own life on a cross. That is what love is. Not our default setting, but where God's spirit-gifted faith originates and brings us that picture of love. And so spirit-gifted faith sees Jesus not only as a divine and living God, but also as a man who suffered in human flesh, died for you and me gave up his life that you and I might live. So spirit gifted faith doesn't create a picture of God out of the best that humanity can somehow do. Spirit gifted faith hangs on to the promise that humanity will be empowered to live out for one another, to live for one another because of the best that Jesus was able to do. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. No other sacrifice is necessary. All that needed to be accomplished for our rescue has been done. All of it has taken place to bring God's gift of unconditional love to you and me. Now the very first people who read 1 John 
and this is why I think this is so appropriate for a confirmation day, the very first people who read 1 John were faced with a discernment challenge. Many were being led astray by those with, within the church that were teaching a modified version of who God is and what God did through Christ Jesus. And so they separated out God's love as a kind of a nice idea from the very real life Jesus lived and the tangible life Jesus died. Today also, God's perfect and fulfilled love for us in Christ Jesus leads us to exercise a kind of discernment and to test the spirits. The spirit leads us to discern and confess with our mouths, as our confirmands are doing today, what we believe to be true about Jesus Christ. And though much is to be gained by pastors and teachers, that's why we have seminaries after all, Jesus is more than just a set of church doctrines to be interpreted by religious professionals. Did you notice in the text a few minutes ago when it was read that when St. John addresses the people that he's writing to, he doesn't separate out those that are in the front, the church leaders, from those that are in the pew, the lay people that are there. He just says to everyone, beloved, beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. I like that. Even though I read those words and realize that John is talking to me, he's not only talking to me. We're all in this discerning work together. And though there are times I'd like to think that as the pastor, as a professional student of the scriptures, my words should be the last word about what the Bible means, that is not the case. The Word of God is at work in each and every one of us. And thank God it's not Pastor Blanky or any religious professional uh, that may be out there who has the last word on what the Scriptures say. It's the Word of God alone and the work of the Holy Spirit moving through word and sacrament that has the final word about the truth of God's love. Imagine how much better we would be at discerning the Spirit's once it's not just two or three or four sets of eyes on the scriptures or even a hundred sets of eyes on the scriptures, but everybody's eyes on the scriptures that help us understand more and more about God. That's what I live for. That's what the life of discipleship as a community of faith is all about. But that's not all. Not only does the Spirit lead us to discern what is true from what is not true, and confess with our mouths what we know about Jesus, as you guys are going to do in just a few minutes, together with us, the Spirit leads us to live out, however imperfectly, to live out the unconditional love of God that Jesus first made possible. In fact, the original Greek word that's translated uh, perfect, as in the love of God is perfected in us, usually means has its goal, has its goal in us. So you can think of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, finding its goal in you and me today. As people who abide in Jesus, we long to live as he did, sacrificially. Jesus, if Jesus is more, no more than simply a cheerleader for every instinct we have about what God thinks or what it is we should do to live our life, we have no more than simply a temporary kind of understanding of him. His truth in that case is no longer the truth. But if the main takeaway about God's love for us in Christ leaves out the reality of human suffering, the reality, for example, just to grab one headline in the last week, the reality of what's going on in India right now as COVID-19 spirals out of control, or if it overlooks or whitewashes the problem of sin that you and I are called to forgive, no matter how hard that forgiveness might actually be, it belongs to the spirit of falsehood, not the spirit of truth. You can't have it both ways. Jesus wasn't afraid to get into the messiness of human existence. And in some smaller measure, you and I are called to do the same. There are times, 
some cases more than once in the course of a day that like to organize reality according to my agenda. There are times I know I'd like to believe God's will for me is for me to be happy on my terms and nobody else's. There are times I try to convince myself that my wishes must be God's will for me. But the capital T truth about God has more to say about God's love for sinners like me than it has to say about fulfilling my brand of happiness. God's brand of love must have its goal in us. By the gift of God's Spirit at work through holy baptism, the Word of God, that we don't celebrate it today, the body and blood of Jesus that we receive in the Lord's Supper, all of those are places where we are called to abide in Christ Jesus. Places where God's love not only can have its goal in us, it truly empowers us so that it does. You and I, as I, you've heard me say many times, are ordinary sinners. We are sinners, and for that reason, we cannot help but, according to our sinful nature, fear God's punishment. But God's perfect love for us, gifted to us in Christ Jesus, leads us to stand boldly now before God, and on the last day, it casts out our fear. Our faith is always, from our point of view, as I said before, an imperfect and an inadequate thing. But the Holy Spirit takes that unpresentable faith and makes it something beautiful in God's eyes. Something presentable before God. People who wonder if their love will ever be returned and love in accordance with that live in fear. God's love for us came before our love for him. It's not dependent in some way or fashion on our love for God. So because of Jesus, we have nothing to fear about God, nothing to worry about in facing the world, even when the world doesn't understand the ways of faith. And as we strive to live out what it means to love others sacrificially, even when it appears foolish and idealistic and unproductive in the eyes of the world, we are given the courage to stay on task and to do just that. I uh, subscribe to a series of devotional poems that come to me from um, the Southeastern District, written by Pastor Don Schaefer. I don't know if any of you know Pastor uh, Schaefer, but he's been, been writing these for First John for many months now. I'd like to close with words of his from one of those poems that speak to this truth of what love is all about in 1 John. It says, living life with this mindset, putting the love of Christ into practice, brings vulnerability and risk. Because giving more than getting often wounds us deeply. But in the love sealed for us through an ugly cross comes a beauty to our heart that society cannot take away. So we continue on, one generation after another, living out a lively and loving response to the one who calls us his own. In the end, our overwhelming fears are overwhelmed by bigger and better things. The sacrificial and courageous love of God that has your name and mine on it. We'll still from time to time get things wrong. We'll still think of God's brand of love as a pale reflection of our own rather than the other way around. That's just how we are. But today, confessing what is true about God, we abide in his love without fear. And as people in whom the love of God has its goal, we seek the strength of the Spirit to love one another, to love others even when it's difficult. Abiding in Christ, we have all that we need to do just that. And the peace which passes all human understanding will keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. This time I'd like to welcome our families and confirmands and Unfortunately, we have to limit our uh, numbers to just parents. So parents, 
uh, or some representative of the family with your, uh, your youth, just come and we're going to form a semicircle around the altar all the way from behind the baptismal fonts to the pulpit. And if we could kind of, I don't know if this is going to be, uh, let's just go ahead and line up. <laughs> Rather than trying to organize by, by last name. Let's go ahead and line up. Okay. All the way over here. Come over here. All the way behind. We have to kind of stagger a little bit, then we can do that too. We're not going to be up here for long. You guys come over, maybe context, if you could maybe come out and just go down that aisle a tiny little bit. Let's see, if you guys can maybe just back up a little bit and bring you guys in. Bring you guys in. Okay. Kind of stagger out and then in, maybe like right up here. Okay. Right. And then if you guys want to come like right up here. Does that work? Okay, we're all up here. Dear brothers and sisters, at the baptism of these young men and women, their parents and sponsors promise to provide for their spiritual growth and training. Today we give thanks to God for the work which parents have done to prepare their children for faithful living. We also thank God for the work parents will continue to do as they teach and model the Christian faith for these young men and women in the future. Thanks, thanks to you, O oh Lord for the, the faithful, faithful work, work of parents. These young people have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. We, we rejoice that they now desire to do this and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word. God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now therefore I ask you, do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church? the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures as you've learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? If so answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God, and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully. Do you intend to live according to the word of God, and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession, and church to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who, is, who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these young people your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and respect of the Lord, the spirit of the joy of your presence through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 
This time we would like to have the parents read the Bible passages that were chosen by each student. And we're going to proceed in alphabetical order using the two mics that were here. So we ask that if, uh, if you want to go to the last page, page 19 of your bulletin, all the names are listed there. Uh, Vicar Shaw will, will uh, alert us to those that are, are with us virtually. And uh, as one person, if, if the first two could just stand one at each mic, we will proceed in that fashion. Starting with Madeline Blackburn and Stephen Buck. So our first, uh, Madeline is joining us online. Her first came from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Stephen and Mary Parker. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do just, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. You guys can just stand right here. We'll do the laying out of hands right now. First, Stephen. Stephen, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, Strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Mary, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Addison Collins. Addison shows 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Let's face this way. And Mama, if you can put your hands on your back. Too. Addison, excuse me. The Almighty Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth, the water, and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Allison Hurd. Allison chose Psalm 182, verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Allison, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins. Strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Sydney Holfeller joining us via live stream. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Grant Klein. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. <clears throat> the Almighty Father, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new life through water and holy baptism, through water and the Spirit of holy baptism, and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you in life everlasting. Logan Konstasek. <laughs> Logan Kostanzik chose Psalm 94, verse 19. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul.
Lord, with the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new life, new birth, through water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Aiden Lady. Aiden has selected Luke 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. James Miller. Uh, James chose uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. James, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you by, with his grace to life of the rest. Enzo Moscatello. Enzo chose Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Enzo, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with these grace. Landon Pets is joining us online. Chose Exodus 15, verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Benjamin Pianta. Ben chose Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Benjamin, the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth through water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you by his grace into life everlasting. Summer Schwandron. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new life, new birth, through water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you by his grace, to life everlasting. Rachel Sheltanis. Rachel, from Proverbs. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Rachel, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace, and life everlasting.
Sullivan Schwartz chose 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. And Mary Troutman, 1 Peter 4, chapter 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Abigail Verbert. Abigail chose John 1, 16. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. Abigail, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth through water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you by his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And Lauren Webb. Lauren chose Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Lauren, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth through water and the Holy Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you by His grace, and life everlasting. Dr. Shaw, could you tell me again, so the names of those that are not here are Landon, Sullivan, Mary, and then there was one other one? Um, Madeline, Sydney, Landon, Sullivan, Madeline, Sydney, Landon. Okay. All right. I, I think those that are at home um, can also, we can also do the laying on of hands with their family members. So I'm just going to call each name and we'll read the same words that we read here together today. And parents or family at home can read the very same words over each of them. Okay. This is on page 12 of your bulletin. So, Madeline Blackburn, Madeline, with mom and dad's hands on you, the almighty God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and his Holy Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you by his grace to life everlasting. Sydney. Sydney, the almighty God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Landon, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, has forgiven all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Sullivan, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven all your sins, strengthened you by his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And finally, Mary. Mary, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you by his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Let's give a round of applause for all these. Congratulations, everybody. Before we, before we sit down, I just want to recognize a few that were also, uh, you know, so instrumental. Of course, Vicar Shaw and for his leadership for the eighth grade class. We're so grateful, Ellen, for all that you did. This year. And for also Miss Ann Altieri, I just want to recognize Ann. Ann was this this person that maybe you didn't know what she looked like even. <laughs> she was she was looking at your sermon notes and 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 uh, summarizing and giving that information to us. So Ann, very much. Thank you for your service. Our Sunday school teachers, your seventh grade uh, confirmation teacher, or confirmation one. There are a lot of people in this process. Most importantly, parents and family. We're so grateful that that your young people are here today, and it's because of our efforts together as one community of faith that we continue to lead them. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. You can return to your seats. As they are returning, I will just remind all the students that just as Pastor said in the sermon. This is a, this started with your baptism and the promises that your parents made. 
This is just another step in this journey as we step forward to help your parents. And the journey continues after this into high school and beyond as you continue your walk of faith, as the Spirit continues to strengthen your faith and, uh, as you go into adulthood. Please rise as you are able for the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take a moment now to greet each other with that peace. Please remain standing as we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our Father in heaven, you have grafted us into the true vine, Jesus Christ, that we may have life. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you provide nurture and growth through the efforts of your missionaries, pastors, and teachers. Bless them with your protection and strength, and give them joy in your ministry. Inspire us to support them with our labor and our grace. Heavenly Father, we pray that as you tend your garden, the church, you would restore those who are separated from the vine. Use us to reach out to We remember before you the leaders of our government and of the world. Help them to seek fruits of justice. Defeat the forces of terror that war against the innocent and protect those who are persecuted for their faith in Christ. Protect and prosper all who serve our country and bless their mission. Father, we remember today those who are sick for Doug, Janice, Kathy, for those who are in mourning, the family of Reverend Art Byer. And we give you thanks today, Lord, for our worship volunteers, especially Mike Haney's coordination, for those who volunteer as worship assistants, readers, greeters, ushers, for our confirmants and their service, and for our new associate pastor's call as he and his wife travel to North Carolina after graduation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all for whom we have prayed and those we mention silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Jump over to page 18 in your bulletin now. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Almighty Father, Bless the Word.
is risen. 